many of you have heard of the Library of Alexandria? For a library founded over 2,000 years ago, you hear about it a surprising amount today. For many of us, libraries are places of learning, research, and social spaces. But libraries are also powerful symbols of knowledge and authority, and models we use to preserve information and send it on to the future. For example, as curious as it may sound, the Library of Alexandria is a model for information technology today. Wikipedia, Google Books, and the Internet Archive have all been compared to the library for their attempts to collect all of human knowledge and store it in one place. And how many of you knew that Amazon's Alexa is named after the Alexandrian Library? Why is one of the oldest libraries in history such a powerful symbol today? I work on ancient libraries from an exciting period of Greek history called the Hellenistic period, from 323 to 31 BC. During this period, a new type of library emerged. You see, archives and libraries have existed for over 5,000 years, since the third millennium BC. Archaeologists have uncovered collections of cuneiform tablets from ancient Mesopotamia, papyri from ancient Egypt, and Linear B tablets from ancient Greece. Kings, priests, scribes, and more depended on these archives and libraries to govern and do their jobs. But it's unlikely that most other people even knew these collections existed. However, during the Hellenistic period, a new type of book collection emerged. As opposed to the private archives and libraries that had existed for millennia, these new libraries were large and public-facing, located in major cities, mostly clustered around the Eastern Mediterranean, but found as far west as Italy and as far east as modern-day Afghanistan. At the end of the Hellenistic period, politicians started building monumental libraries whose facades towered over the ordinary citizens walking beneath them every day. How did this shift from private to monumental libraries take place? Well, since antiquity, the story has been that the first monumental library was a library of Alexandria, founded in Egypt around 300 BC by a great king, Ptolemy I, one of Alexander the Great's successors. Supposedly, the library contained hundreds of thousands of books. In fact, every single book ever written. And it became the model for all other Hellenistic libraries. Most modern scholars recognize that the story is exaggerated, but they still believe that the Library of Alexandria was the original monumental library. This ancient story has become history. But in the last decade, a few scholars have started to question whether it's really true. They've pointed out that the narrative is full of historical inaccuracies and inconsistencies. More disturbingly, as I got deeper into my own research, I found that this story dates from later than some of our evidence for other libraries. Evidence like a marble plaque listing donors who founded a library on the Greek island of Kos. A catalog of authors painted on the wall of a library in Sicily. And traces of ink left behind on the floor of a treasury in Afghanistan where a book had once fallen to the ground. I started to think, what if the Library of Alexandria wasn't the first library? What if something more complicated had taken place? What if this story was just a myth? In that case, how did they go from private to monumental libraries? And why wasn't anyone writing that history? Where did this fantasy about the Library of Alexandria come from? And why was it so powerful? These are the questions I answer in my research. First, 
by studying material evidence, I look at how libraries developed as institutions in the Greco-Roman world. Rather than being the invention of a single person at a single place at a single time, the development of libraries was a slow, gradual process that took place throughout the Mediterranean and Near East. It depended on many different factors, changes in education, book culture, and the ways aristocrats invested money in local communities. But what lay underneath all of these changes were attitudes towards Greece. Greek literature was prestigious, and libraries allowed people to harness this prestige for cultural capital. I then go back to stories about libraries, especially the Library of Alexandria, to try to understand where these fantasies about libraries came from. I found that in these stories, libraries act as powerful metaphors for empires. There are two motifs where this is especially clear. The first is the motif of the universal library, the library with every book in the world. Although libraries, like empires, were finite, by claiming your library contained every book in the world, you could claim your empire controlled the world itself. The second motif is the transfer of books from place to place as people buy, steal, and plunder them. One especially common journey that fictional book collections take is from Athens to Alexandria to Rome. In these stories, the transfer of books symbolizes the transfer of power in the West, from Greece to Rome, from library to library, and from empire to empire. Myths and origin stories encode people's beliefs and shape their actions. They become part of our history, the way we understand our past and ourselves. But they can also create false narratives of continuity, narratives that empires can exploit to their own ends. Sometimes the result is that history is forgotten until all we have left is what we've imagined. Hellenistic libraries shaped ideas about Greece, both as institutions that promoted Greek literature and as symbols of cultural continuity. By studying libraries, we can better understand many of our own ideas about Greek literature, Greece, and the supposed origins of Western civilization. But by studying libraries, we can also better understand the world around us today. Data is money, knowledge is power, and the fantasy of the universal library is closer than ever. As technology changes what libraries are, we can best understand ideas about them by turning to libraries of the past, real and imagined. Thank you.